Hi guys, this is the unboxing and overview video for the latest offering from Ink Machines which is the Stingray X2 model. It's just come today, super excited about this machine. Let's get cracked straight on with it. So this is the box. So this machine is sold as liner and colour packer. Um, for shading, that would be the the dragonfly from Ink Machines. So this is it straight out of the box. Here it is in all its glory. So this one is the X2 Stingray in cyanide cyan. Um, straight off the bat, this machine cost me four hundred and twenty-seven pounds. Uh, I bought it direct from Ink Machines in Sweden. Uh, that included the Swedish tax and um, the postage and everything in. So that was £427. Funnily enough, it was cheaper to order it from Sweden and have it posted than it was to order it from the UK. Um, if you were to order this from the UK from any of the big boys' websites, um, it probably cost about between £50 and £70 more. So I figured it makes sense to order it direct from Ink Machines and it also makes sense because the warranty is with them so I thought I might as well order it straight from them. Um, when I was looking for a new rotary machine um, I, I tried to look for some reviews on this and there's a couple of forums out there which are uh, people have got an opinion about this machine uh, people that don't own this machine have an opinion about it and there's people slating it uh, that have never tried it and on one of these particular forums I read someone said um, someone asked the question what's new with the with the new Stingray what's um, what new features are on it and then some keyboard warrior piped up and says oh it's a uh, it's the old Stingray they've stamped an X2 on the frame and repackaged it they've not changed anything um, <laughs> I don't know where people get off writing stuff like this but internet's full of them it's completely not true. Someone also wrote, I, you know, I, I wouldn't spend that kind of money on this machine. Ink machines are lazy, they haven't even changed the shape from the old one. Well, I'm a firm believer of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this, this particular shape, there's a lot of rotaries on the market which are this shape, and for good reason. You know, there's been copious amount of money spent on, on this on ergonomics, weight, stuff like that, which has led them to, to make the machine this shape um, because it just works. So I, I don't see that as a, as a reason not to buy a machine from a company because of the shape. I mean, it's, it's not a reason I, I, I not buy a machine, you know. I mean, if you're talking about shape, just going to coils, I mean, the, the shape of a coil basically hasn't changed since it's been invented. So that argument doesn't hold any weight, especially um, it wouldn't put me off buying one. Um, <clears throat> so why did I buy this uh, machine? Well, this machine comes with a 6 watt custom built Swiss motor and Ink Machines state on their website this is the most powerfulest motor currently on the market of its size. Like I say, it's, it's custom Swiss built so it's going to have some kick. Obviously we've got standard needle bar retainer here. Um, it's pretty standard on most machines now to be fair. It's got the gib screw at the top here. Um, this can go back about three and a half turns and then the cap will come off. Um, what's different with this uh, machine is it's actually got a damper inside the cap because uh, a lot of these rotaries uh, they tend to make a clanging noise and a bit of a clatter uh, especially when the gives out quite a bit and it's set to soft. So um, they've included a damper system in there so you don't get that rattle. But all that wasn't the reason why I bought this machine. I bought this machine because it's the only machine on the market currently which features a completely redesigned uh, cam system inside. Uh, the cam is actually called a, a Desmodromic Roller Cam System. What that does is it mimics the motion of a coil machine. So, to understand how this cam system works, you've got to understand how a coil works. 
So I've got this old coil machine here just to explain briefly how um, this, this new cam system works. So basically on a coil machine, what happens is with this armature bar, you can see it there, this armature bar is going up and down, but it's always in a constant state of change because the circuit's being broke and then the circuit's um, being made again and you've got this constant on and off going on. And how that transcends to the needle is the needle is not going up and down at a constant rate. What's happened is the tip of the needle's hitting the skin and then it's coming to a slow and then the back spring and the coil machine is flicking the needles back up out of the skin just this cycle means that the needle's not going up and down at a constant rate. It's not going up and down smooth. It's sort of slowing down and speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, and it's constantly doing that. And many people, majority of people, will say that a coil machine does have the edge on lining uh, compared to a rotary machine. And a lot of that is to do with how the coil machine works and, and the movement of the armature bar. Now, what's so special about this new Stingray X2 is the cam system inside mimics the same motion as what a coil does. So the needle will be slowing down and speeding up constantly. But whilst this is happening, the motor is continually running at the same rate. So all the clever work is being done by the cam. So you've got this nice Swiss motor running and running and running at a constant, nice, consistent speed. But the cam and the needle is mimicking the slowing down and speeding up of a coil machine and the cam system in this is currently uh, ink machines have a patent pending on it so that's why I got excited about this machine because this machine doesn't need to be tweaked like a coil machine does you know after tattooing for a while with a coil machine it'll probably need a, a little tickle just to get it back to running smoothly sometimes carbon builds up on the coils or the spring can lose a bit of tension um, because there is no tuning to be done with this ink machines actually state that this not only lines the same as a coil machine it actually runs more consistent than a coil machine which is a pretty big claim for a rotary now another amazing thing about this machine is I'm going back to the coil again on a coil machine, when the armature bar goes up and down with the needle, it's a 100% linear motion, uh, straight up and down. There's no deviations, it's not going side to side, it's going complete straight up and down. You know, the, the coils are pulling this armature bar down and the back spring's taking it back up. There's no deviation at all. Now, on a lot of rotary machines on the market, what happens is the armature bar equivalent, which is the needle pin here instead of it just going straight up and down what tends to happen is it and I've noticed this especially on machines like the swash drives the needle bar instead of doing this it's if you look at it when it's running straight on it's actually doing this and it's making like an oval shape and that's just the way the motor drives the needle bar it makes that happen and it's it's fair enough to say if you've got like this oval motion going at the top ever so slightly you're gonna have it at the bottom as well where you, your needles are hitting the skin while they're doing all the work so this machine and again ink machines they, they say this on the website is 100 percent linear motion up and down there is no deviation whatsoever in this machine it's straight up straight down i'm just gonna quickly plug it in show you it running so this is with the gib screw set all the way down to the bottom, locked down, uh, so it's got no gib at all, and it's set to 8.5 volts. That's really, really packing a punch. So I'm going to keep it at eight and a half volts and then I'm just going to start unscrewing the gib so it's uh, three full turns out.
Still running at eight and a half volts. So that's just over three full turns out now. We're good. Still at eight and a half volts. So one thing I have noticed about this machine, which is why it's packaged as a liner, it's not as soft as the Dragonfly. It's not nearly as soft as the Dragonfly, but it has got that softness if you wanted to sculpt your lines. You know, if you wanted to uh, rework a line uh, rather than having it on that solid hit, just churning them up, and you have got the option to get in there a few, to have a few more passes out with this setting on. So I can feel a difference there. That's, that's the overview of this um, Stingray machine. Um, back to my original point um, about some forums with people on there saying this and that about this machine and you know they've not even owned one of these machines or basically don't know anything about these machines they're just on there saying what they say. Uh, people saying it's not worth the money. Well my response to that would be you know for £427 you can buy a Spectra Halo for the same price. Now, I've never used a Spectra Halo and I'm not going to say anything bad about them because I've heard a lot of people say that they're really good machines for lining, really good rotaries. But my point being, a Spectra Halo, when you set it up, you've got to put an elastic band round here to hold your needle bar back. You know, it doesn't come with this needle bar retainer. Now, you know, if people are paying the same price for a machine which you have to use an elastic band on then I, I, I can't see how people are saying that this is overpriced that's my point I don't think this is overpriced at all um, it's up there, I, I think it's priced right for a top end rotary it's up there with all the big boys and I think it's, I think it's priced bang on the money feel free to comment and um, as soon as I've had a good play around with it, I'll put a review up on it of it in action.